It's Wednesday, it's time for a first look, an unboxing, and today I'm very excited to be presenting to you Lair Zero. It's not just a meme, this is trustless, omni-chain, interoperability, generic messaging. There's a whole bunch of stuff to wrap your head around, and we will do exactly that after this message from our sponsors. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. A balance of the gas-optimized vault architecture makes trading cheaper than anywhere else. Liquidity providers can optimize their fee earnings using the dynamic fee system that automatically adjusts to market conditions. You can also use asset managers to lend out idle assets, dramatically increasing your capital efficiency. And because Balancer is an open platform for flexible automated markets, you can choose from stable pools or weighted pools, and in the future more designs will be created that they don't even know about yet. Check it out at balancer.fi. DeFi users, you no longer need to pay expensive and unpredictable interest rates on your ETH loans. Liquity, a decentralized borrowing protocol, allows you to borrow against your ETH interest-free. Loans are paid out in LUSD, a USD-pegged stablecoin, and need to maintain a minimum collateral ratio as low as 110%. To learn more, head over to liquity.org forward slash defiant to get started and get the most out of your borrowing needs today. So welcome to the interoperable future, the omni-chain future. If you look on the right here, we have Frodo, one ring to rule them all. I break for maxis. Ethereum maxis, Bitcoin maxis believe that that is all you need. All you will ever need is built on Ethereum. All you could ever want is Bitcoin. But of course, we know that this may not necessarily be the case, and there are a ton of projects tackling the problem of interoperability. You might have heard of IBC, the Interblockchain Communication, that's Cosmos, that's their ecosystem. There are a ton of projects plugged into that. Terra, Cosmos, Solana, and many more will be plugged into that interoperability matrix. Polkadot, building parachains to allow lots of different um, self-governed and self-centered blockchains to still connect with each other, to talk to each other, and of course, transfer value. And then ThorChain, which allows you to swap assets between chains using the Rune token and this kind of decentralized liquidity pool. Big kind of interoperability plays. But of course, they have some problems and they are a little bit clumsy, all of them. And of course, it's wonderful to think that we can just bridge assets all over the place. Have you ever tried doing it? I think for most people, it's just like, oh, oh. that's where we are. So this is the bridge kind of ecosystem at the moment. Big thanks to D. Berenson for this graphic. So you've got Cosmos, you've got Ethereum, you've got Polkadot. There are other ecosystems as well, but generally it'll kind of fall into this. It was kind of one of the last things I did when, when I was at Harmony, actually was working on bridges and really getting deep in the weeds on how hard it is to build a truly permissionless, trustless bridge. It's not a simple thing at all. Things have moved on now, and we do have a lot of these bridges, but as you can see here, it's, it's a little bit messy, right? Let's be honest, it's a little bit messy. It's possible, but messy and expensive. So really, when we talk about interoperability, what we mean here is the communication mechanism between two or more blockchains. It's the power to see, access, and share information across different blockchains or blockchain networks. So something over there, I want to see it, I want to interact with it, I want it now, but really, the kind of golden goose of interoperability is that it should be secure, it should be seamless, and it should be very fast. That's where I think the big dream of interoperability goes to. So here we have layer zero, and they claim that this is interoperability that actually works. And if you say that you have something that actually works, you're also claiming that the system that we currently have does not work, which is not true because it does work. It's just clumsy. So I went through their white paper and a couple of things kind of jumped out at me. It's actually a very short white paper. I definitely recommend reading it if you're interested in this. So they talk about, um, in related words, this section builds an understanding of the important players in the cross-chain interaction space, why they fall short of the ideals of trust as valid delivery and how layer zero closes that gap. So this is what layer zero is gunning for. But as you'll see, they don't replace interoperability as it currently exists, they simply make it more efficient. So it might seem like they, they're kind of coming up with this solution that makes all of these other things invalid. That's not actually what's happening here. They're just creating um, a mechanism by which they can make it more efficient. 
So layer zero, as they say, provides the ability to directly transfer states to and from Ethereum without a middleman, allowing users and applications to leverage the stability and trustworthiness of the Ethereum chain without the cost and bottlenecks of the solutions described below. So they go through in the white paper some of the problems with, for instance, ThorChain, with Cosmos, with Chainlink, and then try to understand where they might be able to fix that. So what is it, what is it that they're actually trying to fix here? So there are two approaches to interoperability that they identify in that white paper. One is the middle chain. So here, middle chains receive, validate, and forward messages between chains. Middle chain is granted full signing power to all messages, making it a single point of failure. And in the event of consensus corruption, all liquidity can immediately be stolen on all chains. So this is kind of the Thor chain um, vibe. And then there's the on-chain light node. So on-chain light nodes receive and validate every block header for each pairwise chain on the opposing chain. So you run a light node on one side and a light node on the other side, and those are sent to each other. And this is very secure, but it's also extremely expensive. So this is where we get to layer zero's approach, which is an ultra light node. So you get the security of a light node with the cost effectiveness of a middle chain. And it's performing the same validation as an on-chain light node, but instead of keeping all block headers sequentially, block headers are streamed on demand by decentralized oracles. And that probably doesn't mean anything to you, but essentially what they're providing is native direct communication between chains. So if you look at the, the diagram on the light, on the right here, you can see layer two, layer one, layer zero, nice and memey. But I think what's important to, to think about here is the distinction between how we think of our activities bridging and what might be possible here. So at the moment, we think of bridging as value transfer. We take an asset that we have and we move it from one place to another, to another, to another, across a bridge until finally we arrive at a destination and then we can actually do our business. One way to think about this is if I, for instance, want to go shopping in Cape Town. How am I going to do that? Am I going to go to the online shop and just kind of shop there? Or am I going to physically take my money and jump on a plane? But then I have to, you know, I have to travel to the airport, and then I have to jump on a plane, and then I have to get on a bus and then go to the physical shop in South Africa. No, of course not. What I would do instead is I would just go online and shop. But it, it's, it's even more profound than that. It's <clears throat> what layer zero is creating is generic messaging. It's simply saying, you can pick up a phone, call someone at the other end and say, listen, I can see with my eyes that this person in front of me has the funds that they say they have. And I can give you the guarantee that you on the other side can trust me. And I don't have to carry my physical assets or my digital assets all the way across from one place to another, to another, to another, to another. Once you start thinking of it like that, that's where layer zero is. And here, is, here it is. So you have these user applications. These are just configurable layers that layer zero sets up for you and they're called endpoints. And they allow you to set up an endpoint on one chain and then endpoint on the other chain. And in between you have these oracles and relayers. So the Oracle and Relays transfer messages between endpoints. And it really is that. It's just messaging. It's not even getting to the point of saying, I need to get this token from one place to another. I need to get it, actually just make it go there. No, it's just picking up the phone and calling the other end. So when a user application sends a message from chain A to chain B, the message is routed through that endpoint on chain A pick up the phone. <clears throat> the endpoint then notifies the UA specified Oracle and relay of the message and its destination chain. So that's kind of like a switchboard. And then the Oracle forwards the block header to the endpoint on chain B <clears throat> and the relay then submits the transaction proof. Someone picks up the phone on the other end and they get the message. The proof is validated on the destination chain and the message is forwarded to the destination address. <clears throat> This is like low level communication. It's basic. It's super, super basic. It literally is like picking up the phone. So what can this be used for? This is where it gets interesting. First one, state sharing. So here's SushiSwap. SushiSwap is proliferated across lots of different chains, but in silos. So you have Sushi on Ethereum, Sushi on BSC, Sushi on Telos, 14 different instances of Sushi. Are they connected? No, they are not. But what if they could be? Would that make the experience of a user on Sushi better? Well, yes, it would. 
But in order to sync the state of all these different chains up with the, the main repository of sushi, which is on Ethereum, there's a bunch of stuff that you have to do, and it is not fun. But using layer zero, this is what they say, you could have a single interface and code base for all cross-chain pairs, and then literally all sushi needs to do is implement the send and receive function, so those endpoints, and then they just send messages. That's it. They don't need to bother with the clumsy business of physically, you know, I say physically, but that's kind of how it feels, this clumsy method of moving the actual assets from one place to another. No, they just need to pick up the phone. We also have this kind of golden grail of the unified liquidity bridge. So again, there is an awful lot of liquidity in crypto, but it is fragmented and it's siloed. And I often use the example of Cardano because there is an enormous amount of liquidity and value locked up in Cardano. And imagine if we could access it all, what could be accomplished? Maybe Charles Hoskinson would be validated after all. So layer zero enables this holy grail, bridging unified liquidity across all chains with guaranteed finality on the source chain. This is what they claim. So you, a user transfers an asset from chain A to chain B. The user is then guaranteed the asset on chain B. And the crucial thing here is liquidity uh, pool LPs receive fees from all coming uh, transactions to chain B regardless of the source chain. So everybody gets paid and everyone can function and transfer value. And it's just a much simpler experience. Again, this doesn't exist yet in its entirety. This is just what they're promising. Swaps, um, yeah, basically existing AMMs can be wrapped to perform cross-chain swaps from one asset to another. So you'd be able to swap from ETH uh, on Ethereum to Solana in one single transaction from the source chain. What does this mean? Cheap, very, very cheap, and probably fast too. Lending and borrowing. Well, this is where it gets really interesting because um, with money Legos and flash lines, all this kind of thing, we're used to kind of wrapping up a bunch of different actions all in one go, but it ends up being really expensive. And I think that's a big off-putting factor for a lot of people in DeFi. It's just, oh, it's just painful and expensive. So here's the problem that they set up. You have money on chain A, but want to farm on chain B. Sounds simple. Is it? No. So here's the, the value chain. Collateralize on chain A, borrow, bridge, there's a fee there, swap, there's a fee there, farm on the destination chain, swap back, there's a fee, bridge back, there's a fee, repay the loan, then uncollateralize. That's a lot of steps. What they claim with layer zero is that you can collateralize on chain A, borrow on the destination chain, farm, repay, and the collateral is unlocked, skipping the four bridging and swapping fees. So it should be a lot, lot cheaper. Should be. So does it work? Uh, well, here's Brian Pellegrino. Brian Pellegrino, also known as Primordial. Why have I chosen this picture? Well, he's a former poker player. He was with Team Polk, and he's now represented as a pudgy penguin. None of that really matters. What matters is that he's got an analytical brain and is obsessed with AI and is now the voice and the face of uh, Layer Zero. And it's interesting because when I watched his interview with Doug Polk, uh, there was a podcast they did together, I was very surprised at just how kind of deep and on the money he was. So he released a 10 minute video, which is a demo of the interoperability of Layer Zero. And in it, they basically demo swapping ETH for USD on a DEX, bridging that USDC to BSC, uh, and then a bunch of these other um, actions as well. But they basically forked a DEX, they call it Stargate, and they use that to basically do all of these steps, but just sending one transaction. So what I'm going to do now is just play you that clip because it will give you an idea of what this is all about and how actually how nice their UX is because the design of Layer Zero is actually pretty nice. And I think this is a really interesting protocol. I'm going to go ahead and click it off and get started here. And so, uh, you know, as you can see, the video on the left uh, starting out with sushi, so that's the swap that's happening, um, and it's sped up at 2x speed. Then again, I will say, uh, for the speed on the right, for the layer zero side, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's test nets, um, so you can't judge sort of speed directly, but focus on kind of the ease of this transaction. So there's one, you know, one transaction being signed here from source. We're saying, hey, we want to go from ETH to BNB. 
Um, and so that transaction submitted. So what has happened now is uh, you have done an ETH to USDC swap on uh, the Ropeston. Uh, that USDC is being moved over Stargate. And then when it lands on uh, the destination chain, uh, so Binance Smart Chain here, it's going to execute that, uh, that flow. Um, so that's kicked off on the left. We're still waiting on the sushi swap. Um, so again, they're going ETH to USDC, sort of same thing happening here. Um, and so again, when you're talking about kind of what this can enable, you think now, right? Like think about Sushi or Uni or any DEX, uh, their current process, even if they're deployed on multiple chains, right? Like Sushi is on both of these chains. Um, what has to happen now is the user swaps and then they have to leave and go to some external bridge. So their swap has just been done and they go to some external bridge and then they need to go um, bridge that asset over. Uh, so that's happened right now, right? He has gone uh, to Synapse and he's going to bridge the USDC uh, over Synapse from Ethereum to BSC. So we're, we're bridging over um, and then, but, but so the user has already left Sushi, right? They've gone to a completely other UI. They have to bridge over this UI. Then when they land on Binance Smart Chain, they don't actually have gas on that chain. So they need to go to some centralized exchange and get BNB and bring it there. And now, you know, you're claiming your transaction or, or need it to uh, instantiate another transaction. And then hopefully you end up back on Sushi again on the other chain and, and then you'll walk through and do the swap over there. But like clearly from Sushi's perspective, you just want this to be one click, right? You wanna live in the Sushi UI and you wanna click it off and have the whole flow executed. So now we're on BNB, we're going to AVAX. Um, as you can see here, um, well, transaction submitted. I think once he closes it, it will show that there is zero AVAX in the wallet. So again, we, you know, we have no gas on that destination chain to pay for anything that's happening over there. Um, and this flow. So again, we've gone ETH to BNB. Now we're going BNB to AVAX. Uh, on the left-hand side, we're sort of still waiting um, for this bridge. Again, timing uh, being you know not exact given its mainnet and testnet. But you can see you know the user of the left is already at 21 individual clicks to do this. Um, so now we've landed on AVAX. So we have our our native AVAX in the uh, layer zero side, and we're going to move that AVAX from uh, Avalanche back to Ethereum. Um, and so, you know, again, just one single click, all three contracts are being executed with this transaction. Um, you know, I, I should say one click in the UI and one click in MetaMask. So two, two clicks or something, I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. Um, and so now, okay, we've landed on, uh, on Binance Smart Chain. We're here, we're doing another swap. And again, this is just more clicks, right? The user is in their, their third UI. Hopefully they've ended up back in this UI. Um, but this is just, this is the state of the world uh, with all of this stuff right now. So this is one of the biggest things that Layer Zero addresses is now at the application layer. All of those apps who want to be multi-chain, they don't need to have all of these disparate UIs. They don't need to have all of these disparate processes. It's one single transaction from source, only having source gas and that entire flow is executed. And that's really, really powerful. Um, so, you know, this is, you'll, you'll see this in everything from casting votes across chains. So say you live on uh, Polygon and all your stuff lives on Polygon, but like votes are being aggregated on Ethereum. Um, now you can uh, potentially, uh, depending on the protocol, now protocols can have it where you can cast votes from Polygon. You don't even need to have ETH in your wallet. You don't even need to have whatever other chain, just a single click, your vote is cast. Now you have unified governance, right? So that was the first look at Layer Zero, generic messaging. Remember that, pick up a phone, call someone, get the job done. It's so profound and I can't believe it hasn't been done before. Is this in any way, shape or form absolutely finished? No, not at all. But what it does do is it shows that there's always potentially a different way of doing things. And this paradigm that we've had of just physically carrying value from one place to another, value transfer may not necessarily be the most efficient, cheapest, best way to do things. And simple messaging, that's all it takes, can get the job done as well. Fascinating stuff. If you have a suggestion for us for first look, please do drop it in the comments below. Looking at my clock here, 91.8 thousand subscribers. Can we get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year? I don't know, up to you. If you're not subscribed and you like what we do, consider doing so and otherwise yeah drop us a comment tell us what you don't like as well i might listen i might get angry but i promise you i will definitely read it i'll see you on the next one have a great rest of your week peace out